DM gives us a big update. D4 is significantly better now. Um, I'm pretty sure this is where he's probably going to talk about the uh, D4 PTR. I did not really get to play. I didn't even play it. Um, I was going to for sure. Like there was not a doubt in my mind. And then obviously POE League was out. So I was playing that like pretty heavy at launch for sure um and then like honestly i went to go and download it and i thought it was just gonna be like a quick update and you basically have to reinstall a whole second version of game which i should have figured like i i didn't even think about that um and it was 90 gigs and i was like d4 ptr it's like nah um so i mean i've been keeping up on seeing what people are saying um there's been a lot of other videos that have been put out there i'm obviously i haven't reacted to them all but um it these changes, obviously, you saw how excited we were when we found out this was happening, but the implementation of it so far, at least from what I've seen, like in his streams, I was watching Rax do it a little bit, too. Um, it it looks very promising. OK, so a bunch of people have asked me uh, about the rework for the PTR, the itemization changes, et cetera. And sort of is it enough? Is Diablo 4 great now? Is it a 10 out of 10 and all these types of questions? And so I'm going to kind of break down my Bro, Diablo 4 is never going to be a 10 out of 10. Like I and I think any like ARPG player knows that because there's too many things that foundationally you would need to just scrap the entire game. Like I think everyone knows that. I'm not gonna sit here and get into all the reasons why, but we all know that from just foundationally, it can never it will never be a 10 out of 10. It will never be longevity wise the best standing ARPG to play compared to the competition that's out there. Um, I think anybody with looking for that expectation, just give up, like, <laughs> just, just go. It, it's not going to happen. Um, but with, I mean, with that being said, I think it can still be, um, changed and done well enough to where I am logging on every season and actually completing it <laughs> and not just maybe getting a character like 70. Um, oh my God. I think on this in season three, my barb was like 40 something. Like I was out of there so quick. It's did not last long my feeling on what i actually think about this now in the previous video i talked about and showed what the changes actually are and gave you a brief like two minute synopsis of if it was a thumb up or thumb down but for me it really feels like this it feels like the game has launched now in a state with the ptr where it feels like a 1.0 or the game is effectively out i saw, I saw somebody put out a thing and said diablo 4 2.0 okay like, like this was a redo but honestly man like this is what it needed like, I think for the audience that they were trying to cater for, there was a lot of things that they did do right. Um, unfortunately, there was just a, a, a lot that they did wrong and like a, a lot that they did wrong to really keep their consumer like very niche. I think they went too niche than they were expecting of the beta things like the minions for instance actually now do something you just take a look at this the minion. i think this is crazy the fact that we finally have i i didn't know how long it would be until we saw a viable minions build i think this is great Minions inherit all of your stats so now they actually dps like crazy and they're just significantly significantly oh they're going better, to work even if i don't help them at all just significantly more aggressive and better than they used to be prior to any of these changes and that is That's significant amazing. for anyone that actually likes the summoner style of gameplay but this is just there's a lot of people out there that they do like the minion build and stuff. And I, I'm I'm kind of back and forth Um, a lot of times when I go on. I, I have a lot of different play styles with ARPGs. Like I'm, I'm very weird. Sometimes I like the barb, Um, you know, like to just fucking spin to win or just be just so tanky and CDR like in. Wow, I love I love Fury Warrior. But then when I play Diablo, like I, I play barb and I'm like, eh, it's like not very fun. Um, I did like, it's like, I have to go rogue and I have to just spam a whole bunch of buttons all the time. And, and I enjoy it. Like I, I do, but, um, I just, it, I don't know. I have so many different styles and the Necro is definitely one of them. Like I, I, sometimes it is fun to just summon an AFK. <laughs> you know what I mean? I definitely think I would want a Necro build to be an option. Obviously in any ARPG, they should be, I don't know how you launch with it, not being a good build, but it, at least it's. It, the game hasn't even been out a year yet, so it, at least it didn't go more than 365 Just days. Just one such example of times that I would go into Diablo 4 before and be unimpressed or uninspired with all some the time. gameplay that I had experienced. All the time. Necromancer minions being one of these common things we've seen since the beginning of the game. And so that theme of, 
oh, I didn't like it what it was before, and now it is what it should have been. Seems to be a common reoccurring theme for me. Another example of this would be the Hell Tides. The Hell Tides now basically have what I would consider probably the highest density in the game once you get this threat meter going. They've taken a lot of the mechanics from the other seasons and thrown them into here. But just the amount of mobs themselves. I just want it to be known. I wish I could go back and find the clip. But dude, there is a clip somewhere out there where I literally was talking about the uh, the blood harvest. Literally, when season two launched and nobody like knew what it was or anything like that, we were just we were just playing. Like I looked at that and me and my dad were playing, it and I was just like, dude, that needs to be hell tied. Like that that right there, just slash what you have, implement this mechanic as hell tied, and and roll with it. Um, and they did like I I'm actually I'm so surprised that they did this because like Helltide for me was so pointless and something that I just didn't want to do. But like, I want to do it. You know what I mean? Like, I want I, I want to want to do it, but it's just. It was almost a, I know nowadays, you know, it's for farming bossing mats, but like it was just so it was so boring themselves like the actual like i say the density of the mobs feels like now what you would think a blood tide actually should have been just a whole bunch of minions beautiful overrunning, overrunning an area look at them go good. the farming's good so it's it's better way better and Helltide this was something too he did he like loki just mentioned like xp is better like because your hell tide always has monsters at a higher level you're earning more xp so there's actually like you are leveling quicker doing a hell tide especially now with the hell tide being up 55 minutes out of every 60 like hell tides are a fucking w um i saw something about now like you can pick up a passive for a monsters and hell tide are like 10 levels higher like this makes hell tide like something in itself to want to do you know what i mean it's it's kind of and i know it's not exactly the same but it's like in poe like i love delving like i i i love delving in poe and it has absolutely nothing to do with obviously they've implemented with maps but like it has nothing to do with bosses nothing like i'm cool with the hell tide being something like that that's great that was usually like my least favorite part of the game. Now it's one of the better parts. So while I was live streaming, I just finished a 151 hour straight live stream. Right. That's why I have a bed in the bro. My dude was in on that subathon. Yeah, it was like 150. Some I stopped in there a bunch of times just to like see what he was doing. Man. And it, it felt like every time I loaded up Twitch and sometimes I'm up at eight o'clock. Sometimes I'm up at seven. Sometimes I'm up to like 2 a.m. three. I feel like this dude was just always live. It was crazy. I respect it background and everything we did our first subathon on the stream uh while we were doing that i did a lot of testing this ptr and one of the common questions i was always getting was uh well what's the point of items and what's the point of you know the core being fixed if there's still no in-game etc and one of the analogies or metaphors that i would have to kind of come back to is well let's say you were overweight what you wanted to do was be a shredded bodybuilder like the very first thing you're going to do is reduce your weight and i kind of feel like that's what they were doing with this here like you can't really make the in game and like have all of these other things that are they needed to gut the itemization and do all of that stuff before they even worried about the end game and they did start doing all of that all in one season so i i think it was great built upon your pre-game like actually having items and what your character's power structure is. exactly they're obviously going to have to rebalance everything etc so i think getting the itemization in the core of your character correct is the first step you gotta lose the weight then you can even see a six pack once you acquire one so i think that that was basically what's happening here they get the itemization right they added a couple new in-game things like the greater rift farming so i think greater rifts will be divisive i think some people will like them some people are so big on greater rifts and like some people are sitting there talking about oh like it's just a copy paste of greater rifts i don't know about you but like i'm here for that i i am i that was one of my favorite things about diablo 3 was was great at riffs like i i i fucked with those heavy i love doing greater riffs i would love to continue like to have that implement like i don't want it to be copy and paste and the exact same thing but like i love what they've done with it the the floors like things are things are different obviously like the game feels a whole lot different like I'm I'm so here for it. That's what we want. People need to shut the fuck up. Exactly, man. Because there's no objectives. You just give into the rifts. Uh, you know, like I even forget what they call them, the pit. Okay, but it's basically great rifts. You get into it. You kill things. You go to the next level. You kill things very quick, very exactly to the boss. It's just fast, fun arcade.
style gameplay. You just blow through things. So uh, some people are going to like that. Some people are going to see it as uninspired and directly from D3. And both of these takes would basically be correct at this point. But I don't really think we're going to see. I mean, you're not wrong. You, when when someone sits there and says they copy and pasted greater risk from D3 and put it in D4, like it's not a false statement, but like who gives a shit? Much of like ultra in-game mechanics that very simple what you need to do is for those people because there will be a large amount of those that say that have other shit to do and you know what you don't want to sit there and do greater rifts or the, the pit that they call it you can farm nightmare dungeons you can farm hell tides you can go do bosses like plenty of other stuff for you to do bro like seasonal based in-game mechanics until we had this itemization core correct we have the new level 200 uber bosses etc which is you can probably argue new in-game but they're kind of like the other bosses but just stronger right so i think now that we have what is in my opinion a much better core they should be able to build i didn't even know about this did he say level 200 ubers that's actually crazy build upon that core going forward so if you're wondering that yourself like okay well the items are there but is the rest of the game well the rest of the game is sort of what the rest of the game was but the itemization itself and the building of your character is what it should have been there is one other change that I don't think is making the rounds in terms of how large I believe it actually is. And I could be wrong about this, but this is just something I'm noticing, which is, okay, so you have these items right here. These are just the base items that I start with. But every now and then, you're going to get these greater affixes. And items are now tradable. Uh, the base items are tradable. And, and uniques are tradable as well, just not the uber uniques, right? So because of that... And because of the fact that greater affixes are fairly rare, but you can get multiple of these, like you can get a unique that has all four as greater affixes, for instance, this sort of revitalizes the trading huh. economy and makes it where acquiring these greater affixes gives you tremendous value of each one of these items. And uni uniques and legendaries are tradable now. Now, rares are basically worthless other than, you know, crafting materials. You're going to need them and salvage them for crafting. Bro, fuck the, fuck the rares, man. Fuck the, fuck the rares. I know everybody sits here and now they've been sitting there saying, oh, like yellows are useless. Good. Who cares? Who cares, dude? I can't tell you in D3 and like just my Diablo experience, like, and I'm I'm not as vet Diablo player. Like I played a good amount of D3, but I mean, I didn't get into it until easily after Reaper of Souls, um, which I know is like a big turning point. Everybody says in that game, but um. Like, dude, the yellows were fucking trash. Nobody cares. Uh, like, it's fine. They, this is what makes legendary special. It, it was better for them to make this to to make these guys two and then those guys three instead of three and then you know four. Like, it was better to just have these be trash. That way, these actually have some value. Materials, etc. But the legendary and uniques now will probably have an economy based around it and because of the way that there's now these uber uber bosses like level 200 ones etc and the materials are probably even more important for that regard because as you kill the new uber ubers you're getting the resplendent sparks from killing them that will also give you uh, the ability to craft an uber unique which is non-tradable for instance you sort of have reasons to trade sell things in order to acquire materials etc so I because here's the thing this is why this wasn't talked about too much they have put out something massive for a possible trading economy they have they have literally put out something that could make an entire economy in a game at this point and it's just low-key if it gets used and it becomes to be a big thing more changes probably to come if it doesn't or other problems arise and no one but no one's using it then you just scrap it and forget about it but it's a very it's a simple thing to add execution will be interesting so i think this is going to have impact on the long term of trading in a very healthy way for people that like I think that I think it's great game. for the game because I remember some of the comments we were seeing in the beginning of Diablo 4 was that uh trading's dead it's a open world but a single player game like some of these sort 100%. of meme comments that were like little you know correct a little harsh but correct basically I don't even uh, think they were the harsh the impact that I think we're having on opening up the legendary and uniques because back in the day when we were saying they'd show this this rework etc one of the questions I had asked was are we going are these going to be tradable and it was like no uh you know this isn't tradable etc but it looks like they're actually making they're actually opening that up which is significant in my opinion for 
people that like to interact with other players. So that's just one like wave. In there is no, there is almost no case in an ARPG where having a good, and that's very important, like a good trading economy is a net negative for a game. Like, if I'm just going to be completely honest with you, I think every ARPG, like, you've got Last Epoch, which is, like, 50-50 on how they do trading, which is fine, because that's what their community was looking for. You have PoE, which is obviously a fucking whole nother, like, you know how to use the currency where you live. Okay, good. You're going to need to apply that to PoE. Great. Um, that Their community loves that shit. Um... Diablo is one of those like I mean when I played D3 trade was big like it, it, trade trade was pretty massive I forget what stuff you couldn't trade I know there was boundaries but like you were always trading a lot of shit um so I you know I I think this is you should definitely have trading no, not a doubt in my mind any I think the complete fucking minority of gamers are the ones that sit there and say we don't want trading impact we're going to see from this earthquake the p the people also that don't want trading are the ones that sit there and get scammed into stupid shit and uh, like that's just where you just need to have a brain i'm sorry here kldr is trading's better i also quite like the master working and because the master working doesn't take a crazy amount of the materials from the pit uh and the pit actually is decently generous in terms of how many they give you as you go through that's good that's important levels, i think the master working isn't going to be a frustrating farming part of the game for instance like we see with hell tides the only part that I could be wrong about for this is the Veld crystals that you get from salvaging rare equipment, for instance. Mm -hmm. That could be slightly annoying because you're not really getting rare equipment as much. True. As rares don't really have as much of an impact. Now, I could salvage all materials, and I'll do this just here for the video real fast. So if I go here and I salvage all my materials, okay, destroy all my materials. Well, that's all no my veiled crystals, et cetera, but there's no Veld crystals. But when you actually look at Veld crystals in order to farm them, it says from rare or better equipments i said like this is a minor fix you know what i mean this is either make it so that when you're getting those yellows you're getting more of those veiled crystals per drop or just make it so that legendaries drop veiled crystals along with um i forget what they've got that the baleful fragments looks like that's for the weapons though, i think but you you get my point so you know the getting veiled crystals seem to be fairly rare so there's still a use for rare items even if it's just for salvage material to buff up your legendary items now, if I was forced to have a complaint still about the game, I would say that I don't necessarily enjoy farming the boss materials. However, that being said, if I think their goal is, no, we want you to farm these boss materials, they just are trying to make it their job to make sure it's more enjoyable to acquire the materials in order to actually farm the bosses. This is why I'm noticing you kill goblins, etc. You're getting living steel. On the occasion, you'll kill like an elite mob and you'll drop a boss material, etc. I'm noticing like the world bosses, you know, gain distilled fear, exquisite blood, all these things. So it, it does factually seem like I'm getting more of the boss materials. And during the leveling process, I'm sure I can start acquiring some of these as I pursue to level 100. So that as long as I can farm the bosses during the hell time enough for maybe like one boss or something like that, I'm cool bosses, etc. Plus with trade, maybe being a little bit more revitalized in the economy that will give us more of a focus on that for trade as well as interacting with other players. So you can get in those rotations for those boss farms, etc. You have one set, you get three other people who have the one set. Oh now shit. The boss four times. Yes, sir. I think we're going to see a comes. lot more of the types of players who just farmed it themselves now interacting with more players as there is more of a reason to both through trade they'll get used to that and then start doing it with boss farming groups etc overall i'm actually pretty positive about what i've seen from the ptr i said this in the previous video i like it quite a lot my impression of it is this is basically what the launch of the game should have probably been and now they're coming back from the deficit and building upon it. And we'll have to see how the season four mechanics, et cetera, interact with it. I wonder if they have a lot more planned for season four or if the stuff on PTR we're seeing is basically the entirety of season four. I don't know. I don't know if any of us really know at this point. So I'm curious to see if they have even more things planned to add on to this, as I do feel like the base of the game is much more solid at this point. And if you are someone who's a summoner style, the, the one to play Necromancer. You're back, minions, baby. You're, like, you're fucking back. Necromancer like a caster base, like a dark caster, you know, bone spear and all that. And blood magic seems to be, you know, the, the crux of what people were using. Now the minions are actually like pretty banging. 
So I like that change as well. And I'm noticing I'm liking more of the changes and they seem to be giving in to allowing your characters to have some power behind them. I mean, I've seen people doing like the the double uh, dust devil swing thing for Barbarian that's just covering the entire screen. The uh, minion necromancers are now strong. So uh, they're giving in. Well, good. Then, you know, Blizzard's going to nerf all of it with each of the characters. And I think that's a pretty good step in the right direction to use an old line. The next step for me is really uh, to make a new character and do the leveling process. I think I'll probably do that tomorrow as I'm taking the day off stream since I did 151 hours straight. Uh, tomorrow, I think I will make a fresh character and do the leveling process from 1 to 100 on the Diablo 4 character and see how the PTR changes affect the leveling process. And that will tell us how the rest of the game is actually going. But in terms of how it feels currently from the PTR boosted characters, I'm quite liking what I'm seeing. But that's just it. Love you all. I'll see you on the next video. That's great. Uh, yeah, he, he, the season four stuff, it's funny enough. I'm reacting to this now. Season four stuff just got leaked. Like, I think within the last, like, 24, 48 hours. Um, listen, I'd be so honest. Yeah, I mean, this will not make D4 the perfect ARPG. It's not going to make it the best one. Um, but I think it's it's going to make it a lot more enjoyable. Um, and I, And from everything that I've heard, like, the stuff that they did add... They're right. Like that is stuff that should have been basically there at um at a 1.0, but for whatever reason it wasn't. Um, maybe they just thought like, hey, like we we really don't need it. Um, and maybe they thought people were just gonna eat it up and not complain anyway. Um, so seeing them kind of go the direction that the game needs, I think it's a W. Um, I will 100% be on. I'm not gonna sit there and force myself to to play it. If I'm enjoying it, I'm probably going to play it for a good amount of time. And if it's bad, then I'm probably going to be off of it right around once, you know, I give Endgame a, a good shot. Because I definitely think I'll make the end game in season four. Like, they, there's there's no way I just bought it. I, I don't think it's going to be that bad. Like, I the pit is, like, essential for me to get into. And... So I don't think it'll be anything like season three. I think it's going to be at least season two where I was pretty deep in the end game um, running bosses, clearing. I'm pretty sure I was clearing all the bosses at that time. Um, So I hope it's at least that, but obviously we'll have more with the pit and it's going to do a lot with trading. That's going to mess with a lot. Being able to have an actual economy in the game is that's a W. I'm here for it. I'm sure a lot of these comments are the same. I'm looking forward to my necro being able to actually do stuff exactly. Uh, surviving the subathon, yeah, that was insane. Um, I can say I'm stoked. Yeah, like I'm, I'm genuinely excited. I'm gonna, I'm going to play this, and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm very glad that it actually got pushed back, um, to May because that gives POE people enough time to really play the shit out of the league. By that point, you're middle of the way through. I don't, I don't think that I've seen anything for last epoch like a new. There, there's no shot of new cycles coming out already or anything like that. Um, they'll probably have an announcement in May, I would assume. But it's great. 